want to promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Africa Today. Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Africa Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africktoday.com. Africa Today, the best of digital TV. ESYDA return to play summer clinics. Recreation, Tuesday and Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. Travel team, EDP, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Free mask and water bottle. Register today at esyda.org. Email info at esyda. Phone 248-765-9369. Office 301-800-7848. Toll free 800-995-5532. Free registration for all summer clinics. All new players need buy uniforms. We're following COVID-19 soccer guidelines. Small group practice with nine players and one coach. For more information, go to esyda.org. L'entrepreneuriat digital vous intéresse-t-il Vous voulez apprendre à construire des projets digitaux Aimeriez-vous gagner des revenus passifs conséquents en tout lieu Voici la plateforme des professionnels du digital, la Diaspo Academy. Ici, vous retrouverez les meilleurs professionnels de la diasporama mondiale connectés sur notre plateforme. Vous allez pouvoir acquérir des formations adéquates qui feront de vous des entrepreneurs digitaux compétents. Étudiants, entrepreneurs, coachs, instructeurs et entreprises, Diaspo Academy est une opportunité pour vous. Elle vous offre la possibilité de suivre votre formation en mode virtuel à partir de chez vous, où que vous soyez sur la planète. Toutes nos formations disponibles en ligne sont dispensées de manière interactive. Il suffit de vous inscrire et vous pourrez les suivre depuis chez vous. Au cours de la formation, vous passerez des quiz et examens selon votre parcours. En outre, à partir de votre tableau de bord, vous suivrez vos performances et progressions. Vous pourrez aussi communiquer avec vos instructeurs et recevoir des notifications. À la fin de votre parcours de formation, vous recevrez un certificat Diaspo Academy Certified. Que vous soyez débutant ou responsable d'entreprise, Diaspo Academy est une opportunité pour vous. Saisissez-la Enfin, que vous soyez coach ou instructeur, ayez accès à un millier d'étudiants à travers notre plateforme. Merci de choisir Diaspo Academy, le meilleur choix pour plus d'informations, allez sur www.diaspoacademy.com. Diaspo Academy, la plateforme des professionnels du digital. Looking to start a rewarding career? Call Gandhi Healthcare today to earn your certification as a nursing assistant, dental assistant, pharmacy technician, phlebotomy technician, and many more. We offer no interest payment plans, scholarships, and tuition reimbursements for those that qualify. Located right in the heart of Pikesville on Town Road and McHenry Avenue in the Pikesville Shopping Center. It offers immediate access from 695 accessible to public transportation on the 83 and 89 bus line. We offer morning, evening, and weekend classes to fit your schedule. Earn your certification in as little as five weeks. We are now offering classes online and on-site. Hurry, classes start soon, so enroll today. Visit us online at GandhiHealthcare.com or call 443-352-8030. Do you want to promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Africa Today. Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Africa Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africatoday.com. Africa Today, the best of digital TV.
Hello, 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 and happy July 3rd. Um, I am your host, Dr. Yvette Boyaboa, with my co-host, Brother Amir Z, the Invisible Man. And we want to thank you today for joining us. And we want to thank Africa today for allowing us this opportunity to come to you and bring you some knowledge and edification and things how we can move forward. So without further ado, I'm going to let my co over and tell you a little bit about what we're going to talk about today and before I introduce my guest. Brother Z, my invisible man. Thank you, Dr. Butler. Uh, yeah, I'm here, but you can't see me. Uh, today we're planning to talk about Pan-Africanism and the possibility that those people taken from Africa and brought to America that were enslaved for 310 years here in America and have been free slaves since 1865 should consider the offer of relocating to Ghana as part of the year of return. And just as a note, uh, as a contemporary Muslim, uh, July 4 of 1930 in the city of Detroit, Michigan, Master Farad Muhammad met with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. At that time, his name was Elijah Poo. So it's a contemporary Muslim holiday. So tomorrow, and again, as Dr. Butler mentioned, I'm the Invisible Man, and before uh, I introduce the guest, because I have a difficulty pronouncing names, I'm going to let her do it. Let me tell you shortly or briefly Pan-Africanism. It is the idea that people of African descent have common interests and should be unified. Historically, Pan-Africanism has often taken the shape of a political or cultural movement. There are many varieties of Pan-Africanism. In its narrowest political manifestation, Pan-Africanists envision a unified African nation where all people of the African diaspora can live. And the African diaspora refers to the long-term historical process by which people of African descent have been scattered from their ancestral homelands to other parts of the world. In more general terms, Pan-Africanism is the sentiment, and you know, sentiment is a feeling that people of African descent have a great deal in common, a fact that deserves notice and even celebration. So I turn it over to you, Dr. Butler. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you for giving us that. And that definition for Pan-Africanism from Britannica. So we want people to just take a look at some of the other definitions um, before we get into our you know, after this, after this um, call, please look at what some other people say, Pan-Africanism. But this topic that we're talking about gives the prime opportunity because is this really our independence? And I would like to say we're really excited to have esteemed, esteemed guests today. Our first guest is Honorable Koju Yanka. He is a scholar, journalist, author, former member of parliament, and Minister of State of the Republic of Ghana. Also, Audible Koja Yanka is the founder of American University College of Communication and Journalism, which was established in 2002. Dr. Koja Yanka, or Audible Koja Yanka, thank you, thank you today for being one of our guests. My pleasure. Wonderful. Our next guest, and these are guests from across the seas, from our continent and our, and our motherland, Ghana. We also are excited to announce that we have Kwaisi Abibio, the director of the Diaspora Affairs Office of the President of Ghana. He was appointed in February 2017 as a director of the Diaspora Affairs. He is responsible for overseeing and the formulation and implementation of Ghana Diaspora Engagement Policy. He was the former Chair of the Year of Return, which was just celebrated last year. And he is the current co-chair of Beyond Return, which is gonna be a 10-year program. And I'd like you to say a few words and tell us about that. Yeah, certainly. Can you Thank you, Doug, for that introduction. All right, so we'll Can you Sorry. hear us okay? Yeah, can you can hear, hear us okay? You. I thought you were, you, were, you, 
we still had some more to say. You, I was giving you the chance to continue whatever you were trying to say. Okay, I'll go on and dive on in. And I want to say these are our two guests from, they're coming from the motherland, the land of Ghana. So I know we have some people from the continent on the line listening in. So remember, you can call in on the WhatsApp number if you're calling from overseas. And you can also call in here locally. And those numbers will appear on your screen. So we have the WhatsApp, our WhatsApp number for people internationally to call in. And then we have the U.S. number for people to call in. And we are really, really excited to bring back a guest from last week. If you watch the show, we had Dr. Joseph Silver, who is amazing wealth of knowledge. He is the president of Silver's Associates and is a full service educational consultation firm. And let me tell you, this man's history is amazing. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I won't say it all. I said, I see Dr. Silver, it's amazing. He has been, he was named the president of Silver, Silver, excuse me, Silver's Associates. He has served as the president of Alabama State University, the provost and vice president of academic affairs of Clark Atlanta University, the vice president of academic affairs Savannah State University, the Assistant Vice Chancellor and Academic Affairs of the University Systems of Georgia, and the Administrator and Professor of Political Science for Kinsey State University. And we want to thank all of our guests today for being with us. So without further ado, I want to dive right into our conversation. We do have a little bit more time today so we can go a little bit over. It's usually an hour-long program, but we're giving a little bit more time because Pan-Africanism is really something that we got to start talking about. And I want to show a little video before we before we really get into it. I'm going to show a little video where people can get a little bit more historical presence of what Pan-Africanism has been and how long people here on this continent and around the globe have really been trying to work to come together. Can we play our video, please? Brothers, sisters, countrymen, you better get on board. Fellow citizens of Africa, I greet you in the name of the Universal Negro Movement Association and African Communities League of the World. You may ask, what organization is that? It is for me to inform you that the Universal Negro Improvement Association is an organization that seeks to unite into one solid body the 400 million Negroes of the world. And we believe that the time has come to unite these 400 million people for the one common purpose of bettering their condition. And it is for this purpose that we are asking you to join our ranks and to do the best you can to help us to bring about an emancipated race. One of the key problems, and it came out in the Fifth Pan-African Congress, that we had to rediscover ourselves, find out who we are, what we are, and not who we are told we are. It wasn't until then, that Pan-African Congress, that I saw the way ahead clearly and knew one day all of Africa would be free. The Congress is the dress rehearsal or the, the forum in which the leaders of post-colonial Africa make their debut. Kwame Nkrumah, who went on to become the president of Ghana, Jomo Kenyatta, who became the leader of Kenya, Hastings Banda, who headed an independent Malawi after Nyasaland became independent. Dr. Nkrumah went out his way to make it vocal what it is today. He endeavored continually to bring us freedom and liberty to Ghana. Ghana is the name Ghana. We wish to proclaim we will be jolly, merry and gay. The, the most striking of all the impressions that I have formed since I left London a month ago is of the strength of this African national consciousness. When do you want independence for Kenya? Today. How soon do you foresee independence in Northern Rhodesia? 
Things are moving so fast in Africa that anything between one and two years. The issue is political, not social or economic. The wind of change is blowing through this continent. And whether we like it or not, this growth of national consciousness is a political fact. And we must all accept it as a fact. And our national policies must take account of it. Thank you so much for that video. Um, before I ask my guests to tell me a little bit more about Pan-Africanism and really how we unify, I wanted to make a note that most people don't realize it, that W. Du Bois, who was a Pan-Africanist himself, he's buried actually in Ghana. So having our Ghanaian brothers online with us is very timely because we always had this connection. and. So I want to go ahead and turn it over and, and you guys, tell me a little about Pan-Africanism from your perspective and how we can start the movement again and really collect ourselves. So we're, unfortunately, as a nation of black folks, we're all over the map. And who would like to start? I see Kojo Yanka, so let me go ahead. As Honorable, Honorable Kojo Yanka, would you like to start a little about Pan-Africanism from the Ghanaian perspective and really and and I want to end with Dr. Silver since he can bring it from the American perspective. Dr. Kojayanka. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I saw in that uh, documentary, um, Marcus Garvey and followed up variously by various meetings and then to Kwame Nkrumah, Jomo Kenyatta, Hitchin Zibana and so on. I, I want to just go just one step back and then I'll come to Ghana. I always want to remember Edward Blyden, uh, who in the late 19th century um, responded to the Back to Africa movements. He was a, a Jamaican who migrated to the United States, a son of a, you know, a slave, and then decided to move to, to, to West Africa and settled down in, um, in, Monroe, in, in, in Freetown, Sierra Leone, and then later also worked in Liberia. But he is an unsung Pan-Africanist. I'm just mentioning it uh, for, for the records that he started a newspaper called The Negro and he tried as much as possible to bring uh, people together, people on the continent and those in the in the diaspora, because he had come from the diaspora, and he his newspaper credited um, the term African personality, and he had three books, uh, which all tell about his vision for a Pan African. Um, state. But beyond that, and this was late 18th, 19th century, so in the around the same time when um, Marcus Gavi had been born and had also started moving from West Indies, uh, from the Caribbean to America to make himself popular in, the, in, in Harlem and in New York generally. Um, why these are important and why Marcus Garvey is also important is that it is Marcus Garvey who gave a lot of um, inspiration among other people to people like Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah, studies, you know, when Kwame Nkrumah, Aziki Wei, Hesin Spanda, uh, Jomo Kenyatta and others had opportunity to come to the US or to Europe uh, to um, get close to Kwame Nkrumah and so on and so forth. But uh, more significantly, uh, Kwame Nkrumah was inspired by not only Marcus Garvey, but also um, W.E.B. Du Bois, and then also later, George Padmore, who is also in Ghana, uh, who were all advocates of uh, Pan-Africanism. And it's important to state that their main concern was not just 
a United States of Africa. But as, I, as was said at the beginning, it was the dignity of the black person. It was a response to the kind of resistance you know, a lot of Africans had made to slavery, to colonialism, to um, response to against white supremacy and wanting the dignity of the African to be retained. And they all agreed through all the conferences that were held uh, in, in, in America itself by you know, the Gavi movement, a couple of uh, many conferences that they held, and then on to those Pan-Africanist Congresses that took, started from London in 1910, Sylvester Williams, uh, through the uh, Pan-African major one in 1945 in Manchester, where Du Bois said that the until the people of Africa, the West Indies and America start and working together, the black person will not be free. And I think that momentum um, really uh, boosted a lot of the uh, efforts that were already being made by other people in various parts of the world. And so Kwame Nkrumah took that inspiration from there, came to the United Kingdom, joined other Pan-Africanist movements, and uh, C.A.L.R. James was there, Padmore uh, joined later. And then we, we get Kwame Nkrumah and others who attended the Pan-Africanist Congress moving to the continent. So Kwame Nkrumah came to Ghana, Jumo Kenyatta went to uh, Kenya. And uh, there was already on the ground the movement for independence. So he joined the United Gold Coast Convention late as general secretary and later broke off to form the Convention People's Party, which accelerated the pace for independence. And um, as soon as we got independent in 1957, uh, he brought in George Padmore to come and help to bring the rest of Africa together. Uh, he also brought in much later uh, W.B. Du Bois, but I must also mention that on the day of our independence in 1957, one of his special guests was Martin Luther King. And this is a very significant part because Martin Luther King had an opportunity, apart from just watching, coming with his wife and uh, other people like Ralph Bunch and others to the independence ceremony, he had time to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting and discussion with Kwame Nkrumah. And how do I know this? Because when he went back to America, he gave a very powerful sermon at the Dexter Baptist uh, Memorial Church in, in Montgomery. And that's where he mentioned Kwame Nkrumah in person and said that he had come to Ghana. He had studied a lot from Kwame Nkrumah. He had found out that you cannot just get freedom from just sitting and folding up your arms, but you must move out. You, you will get uh, all the uh, you know, attacks from people who are against the system and who are against independence, who are against freedom and so on, but you need to keep on. But one significant point he also made in his sermon was that it is time that American Negroes go back to Africa to assist the new independent state of Ghana. Um, this was in 1957, which of course uh, was the time that the civil rights movement was gathering a lot of momentum. So it inspired him a lot. So they inspired each other. And he said, I remember that um, if we are, we are coming from a third world country, right? Here is Ghana, which has gained independence. And now we are in the so-called first world, but in the first world, we are not even first class citizens. So let's fight to be first class citizens. So the influence of Nkrumah 
on the Pan-Africanist movement was greater than you know, what most people had even taken time to, to write about. But beyond that, Ghana started helping other African countries to gain their independence. And as I'm saying, there was a Bureau of African Affairs, which was headed by George Padmore, that was helping to bring all the African states together. And as and when they got independence, they all joined up with Kwame Nkrumah and they uh, held various meetings. Some were held in Ghana, some were held in, 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 in Guinea, some were held in, um, in Mali. But that was also the time that uh, Malcolm X also visited Ghana, was given the opportunity to address the All African People's Com Com Conference. And so the momentum grew around Ghana, Guinea, and Mali, and later uh, went on to uh, influence other independent African states in 1963 for the formation of the Organization of African States, which continued until 2012, uh, when the name of Organization of African Unity changed to African Union. There is an important point to make here because the OAU and now the African Union until recently didn't continue the dialogue that black leaders on the continent were having with black leaders in the diaspora. So there was a break. And when we come up later, we'll find out that it is this break that also allowed a lot of penetration of negative ideas amongst people on the continent and people in the diaspora about each other until uh, when we decided Ghana government initiated the year of return, 400th anniversary, all the um, enthusiasm around the world. Let's go back to the continent. Let's uh, go and you know reunite. But of course, before I even hand over, it is important to remember that in 1992, Ghana started um, a festival called the Pan-African Historical Theater Festival. And that was an opportunity for people of African descent and in Africa to come together every other year to celebrate their achievements in the arts and culture under the sub-theme, uniting the African family. So in fact, Ghana uh, in, the, in the, the later part of you know, the, the, the 21st century, that is from 1992, started this process, continuing from where Du Bois uh, had left off. Du Bois himself, when his, uh, it was in the early 90s that the Ghana government decided to commission his former residence into uh, a museum uh, of, of arts and culture. So we started bringing back the, uh, the, the Pan-African spirits uh, from that time, because after Nkrumah was overthrown, um, Pan-Africanism was thrown you know, in the air by other governments They were not interested. And so uh, in the early 90s, uh, we had people that had connections with the, with the diaspora. So 1992 started, and then Panafest every other year was held, and that brought back a lot of um, people in the diaspora. I must say that in 1997, during my time as chairman of Panafest, we had the opportunity to now open the door, the door of no return at Cape Coast castles, the slave castle, we reopened it and turned it into a door of return because it was that year that two uh, bodies of late buried ancestors were brought from New York and, the, and, and Jamaica to be reburied in Ghana. So we opened the gate and called it the year, the door of return. So really the return started in 1998, you know, in Cape Coast. 
but we formalized it in 2019 with the year of return that was declared to coincide with the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first blacks uh, in America. So we have come a very long way and uh, I'm happy that the government has set up a committee to plan for beyond the return so that we can continue with the momentum that has already been generated. I think I'll add on a little later. Thank you. Right, it the place. director, the chair, the chair of that committee actually is with us today. Um, Honorable Bibio, would you like to um, chime in and tell us a little bit more? Yes, um, thank you. And um, I'm so glad you've given me the opportunity to join your very scholarly team here. And um, Prof has not disappointed me in giving a very good historical background of everything that we have done as Guyanians and two as Africans in the course of moving the Pan-Africanism, um, in advancing the Pan-Africanism movement. I think um, it's a very rich history and uh, experience that he has poured out here and we are most grateful to, to him. It's, it's an opportunity for some of us to learn so much and I'm glad you know I'm here to do exactly that. And uh, he's brought us all the way to this far as, as far as to this um, time when we have been thinking of consolidating the gains and the advances that we've made so far as far as Pan-Africanism is concerned. So the government has um, taken up the challenge and as we have all seen, last year was a major step when we did the year of return and the whole country went agog and the world was all over um, us in trying to find out what we were actually doing as far as, you know, Pan-Africanism is concerned, as far as, you know, uniting the Black community is concerned, as far as, you know, retelling and getting a hold of um, our own narration is concerned. And I'm so glad that we are trying to consolidate it going forward with this Beyond the Return. The Beyond the Return is um, another initiative, again, to um, really make sure that this time around, in everything that we do, we can also put some emphasis on how we can help out in, you know, making sure that it, it, the, 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 the things that we can put in place will enable us to develop as a nation, develop as people. Because we realize that um, in all these um, issues and things that are, you know, happening all over the world, the dignity of the Black man really, really rest on the fact that we need to be, you know, able to stand on our own. We need to be able to, to, to be able to shout from the rooftop as to what we are capable of doing, what we have done for ourselves, and how convenient we have created an environment to enable us to live comfortably and to contribute to the bigger human, you know, endeavors that uh, we find ourselves in. So, um, the, yeah, the return, the beyond the return has got some key pillars that I would be you know, bringing forth in the course of this discussion, which will enable us to rally around as people, as a continent, as, a, as Guyanians, as people from the diaspora, working hand in hand to really advance the cause of um, this uh, emancipation, this uh, African unity. And that is where I think um, I will be taking my direction of, I'll be taking this direction of uh, my argument in the, uh, in the course of this discussion. I think, um, as I've already said, Prof has covered almost everything that we need to talk about here. We have all these institutions in place now. Among some of the things that we have also done in the past is what we have termed the Joseph Project, which is basically looking forward 400 years ago, how biblically, we had, you know, um, the story of the Jewish people had been compared to how the black community could also come back to Africa and uh, help in the uh, development of Africa and Africa as a, as, a, as a continent. 
So several initiatives, and the latest one of which is this Beyond the Return, are all geared towards you know, advancing this course. As is mentioned already, we have a rich institution in the, you know, in the form of the Padmore um, institution in Ghana here. We have the Du Bois um, um, Center and all other things, including the Padmore Improvement Museum, et cetera, which are all you know, visible uh, edifices that would enable anybody to really, really associate our contribution towards this Pan-Africanism movement. And uh, we are going to be doing more than we have already done in the past with some of the initiatives that we would not be able to, even though talking to Prof, we know we have some developments in the pipeline that we are not able to, to, to immediately talk about, but we are very sure that these are initiatives that are going to go a long way and, and you know, advancing the course of the Africanism, putting, making sure that our, intellectual capacity would be highlighted and you know, developed to, to really um, cement our hold on uh, the African, Pan-Africanism. Dr. Silver, because Dr. Hello. Silver, I want you to really talk about, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Dr. Silver, I want you to really talk about from an American perspective. And one thing that Honorable Kota Yonka had said was that there was a division that occurred um, between those in, on the continent and thus of those in the diaspora. Could you talk a little bit more to that and how we can truly start getting on the path to coming together again? Because divided we fall. And right now it seems like we're floundering, but we got to stand together. What can you talk to us about more and how we can really start our Pan-Africanism and really move forward? Well, thank you. First of all, let me say that I'm honored to be on the program and even more honored to be on the program with my big brother, uh, the Honorable Kojo Yanka, and also Mr. Bibio. Um, Mr. Yanka gave us a very, very good and profound history of this movement. And Dr. Bibio brought us up to date in terms of uh, where we are and where we're going. Uh, before I get into the, the question, I want to say that uh, facilitated by Mr. Yonka, I was able to participate in many of the Panifest activities. And as a result of that, I got a keen understanding of what Ghana was trying to do. And uh, Mr. Bibio, I was in Ghana last year as a part of the year of the return. I brought several um, educators with me and we spent a considerable time uh, there in Ghana uh, making those connections. I think as we began to talk about uh, the so-called division, it has to do with, with education, first of all, in terms of what we have been told. Uh, and what we've been told by, by the, the press, the Western press and the Eastern press. Uh, the bottom line is that um, we need to, as, as uh, um, hold on one second. I think we have, um, do we have a caller on the line? Or we hear, we hear, we hear a little one. We hear a little one on the line. Do we have a caller? Yeah. Um, so, so let me continue now okay, that the, the noise yes. is gone. Uh, we need to uh, begin to think about uh, what does it mean in our own space and not listening necessarily to, to the others. Uh, James Bowen said in one of his prolific books that uh, when white America understand that we do not accept their definitions, then they become afraid. And so the old concept of divide and conquer has been a part of this uh, a long time. I have taken people uh, to the continent uh, who uh, really, really did not at first want to even go because they had been socialized by the media and television about what they were gonna find once they got to Africa. But once they got there and began to interact with the people, the government uh, and the communities there, 
they could feel the the kinship. But it goes beyond mm -hmm. the expectations of African Americans and other African people in the diaspora. Uh, it also we also have to have some conversation about Africans who were trained in America and uh, who are still here in some cases and in other cases who've gone back to the motherland to hold uh, significant positions. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, what Franz, Fanon, Franz Fanon told us. He said that when you go back home or when you study in America, when you study in Europe, uh, you cannot become the echo of imperialism. In other words, what he was simply saying is that even though you were taught by these folk, you cannot be these folk. And as a result of that, <clears throat> I think we are where we are today with a clear understanding that the path forward uh, still comes through Africa. As I said on your program last week, that I believe that the problems of the African-American people in the United States uh, the problems of the Afro-Brazilians in Brazil, Caribbean, all of those problems will be solved as we go through Africa and reconnect with uh, the continent and that we're on one accord. Uh, I think that the information that the Honorable Kojo Yanka gave us about Kwame Nkrumah was very much on point because he was indeed a visionary. Uh, not only did he try to unite the United States through his bringing of uh, Du Bois and his entertaining of, of Garvey, but he also tried to uh, bring the African nations together, uh, the East and the West, uh, even through his marriage. And I, I'm sure Mr. Yanka could talk more about that in terms of the marriage of uh, Kwame Nkrumah to an Egyptian. And that wasn't, I hope it was love, but I think it was more than love. It was about the bigger vision of bringing the continent together. And so the conversation has been going on for years and I think it is the right time uh, to begin thinking about uh, repatriation, uh, making sure that the skill level and the skills that are needed to move the continent further, if we all come together, uh, we can address those things. But it's not a one-way street. It's not that the West can give everything and we can learn, they can only learn from the West but we also have to understand that we can learn from the continent of Africa and together we become a stronger people. So again, I'm honored to be on this uh, television program with such esteemed individuals and I look forward to the discussion that will ensue. I do have some other comments I wanna make, but I would hope that they'll be raised within the context of the questions and the answers. Wonderful. Well, I want, I want to thank you, Phoebe, to really give us a history of Pan-Africanism and. The, th the problem that I have and what I really want us to really talk about is some solution oriented as well and solutions of how we get there and then really talk about what Ghana has to offer us and does Ghana has anything to offer and some of those pillars because uh, Honorable Bibi, I want you to talk a little bit more about those pillars. But uh, the question I have now, how do, how do we start the process? How do we become more Pan-Africanism? How do we start unifying our communities as we see them? Because we become so divided. And, and I live here in Maryland, Montgomery County, Maryland, and it's very interesting. Just this, my little small community, my little small community has, we have the Caribbean, the African, and the African-American, and we're all separated. And there's been comments from each community of why we should stay divided. No one's talking about how we should come together. And they're allowing outside fractions to influence them. But how do we get past that and truly start making steps for this? And then and then also want, I want you guys to jump in and talk about how do we get money to do all these things as black folks and Africans here in the diaspora? And so who would like to take hey, that first? Can I jump in? Can I jump in for a minute? Yes. I, I, I'm invisible, but I want to say a few words. Uh, you gave a wonderful lesson about the history of Pan-Africanism, but no timetable. 
So when you talk about George Padmore, he was born in uh, 1901. He went to Fisk, he went to Howard, he wrote for the Chicago Defender, the Philadelphia Inquirer, but more so when you were talking about Nkrumah and Dr. King at the uh, installation or the uh, event that he was at in Ghana in 57, they were very close friends. And in terms of how we can come together, how Dr. King said in reference to uh, Kwame uh, Nkrumah, he said in April 24th, 1957, he said that uh, Nkrumah had said when he and Dr. King was having a meal, Dr. King came back home and Kwame uh, Nkrumah sent him a message. And the message read, our sympathies are with America and its allies, but we will make it clear through the United Nations and other diplomatic channels that beautiful words and extensive handouts cannot be substituted for the simple responsibility of treating our colored brothers in America as first class human beings. So if we are to be a first class nation, we cannot have second class citizens. And that was his idea that he, you know, that's what will bring us together, that we are one people and we have to be respected for our human rights and treated equally. So I yield the floor. Go ahead. Well, I think Mr. Yonk had said it very clearly earlier when he said it's, it's, it's really about the dignity uh, of the African people, no matter where they are. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think also that we have to get beyond the conversation uh, and the description of what the oppressor has done over the years to continue to divide us and actually come to a point of, of, of action. And one of the things that we notice about Pan-Africanism is over the years, it, it has had different pushes, if you will, or different ideologies. Uh, but I think that it's time to come back together at the table to begin to understand how that might fashion itself. And maybe, uh, Mr. Bio, BBO, you can talk about that with regards to what the beyond the return mean, uh, and yeah. we can put it into a context. Yeah, I think certainly. Yeah, I think that beyond the return has um, got some pillars that we are looking to, you know, stand on to enable us to achieve the objectives that we set for ourselves. And one of the key pillars is the promotion of the Pan African heritage and its innovation. And in this, we are hoping that the pillar will focus on promoting Pan Africa and the Ghanaian heritage and developing pilgrimage infrastructures around the sites of memory and development of the tourism infrastructure for target sites beyond the highly frequented sites of Cape Coast and Elimina dungeons, such as the slave, the, the Salaga slave market in the northern region and the Piccolo slave camp in the upper west and other places across the country. What we realized with the year of return was that some of most of what we had done as a country, the exposure that we had given to our tourists, our people who came back was mainly down south and not across the country. But I want to tie this into a bigger sort of uh, discussion here and really highlight on the issue that what the aim is all about in this respect is the fact that we want to use tourism to first and foremost, get our people to know where they come from align with the people, reconcile with the people, you know, understand each other, and then basically build on that once we have those foundations laid. Because I realized that, you know, even though, yes, we all talk about this, we are all black people, we are all from the same African, you know, uh, continent and, uh, you know, things moved on after a while, et cetera. We have fundamental misunderstandings of ourselves and we need to educate ourselves. Our educational curriculum and everything has to reflect that, that, that education to enable us to know who we are, to enable us to then come together as one people. Until we've done that sort of work in the background to build on that foundation, 
we would always be talking about how to move things forward. So there is the need, of course, using various platforms. And one major one for us is that to find that when we open our country up to people to come and know us and to identify with us, we are, we are basically you know, educating ourselves, not just for those who are coming, but for those who are in the country to know that these people are really part of us. And we really need to you know, relate and to think together and to work together and to you know, provide a platform, the investment climate, the culture and heritage and everything that is needed for us to do the takeoff. So in addition to other pillar events, which of course among them is also to how to you know, I, um, visit Ghana or you know, come and know what this country is all about. Of course, in this context, we, you know, we talk about Ghana, we are indeed talking about Africa as a whole. We are talking about how one can come, see the place, fell in love, and then build on from there. So um, I suppose this is something that even though we have begun in Ghana, is beginning to you know, um, take effect in other countries as well. So we know about Nigeria, you know, the taking some initiatives, Sierra Leone doing something all across Africa, beginning to be the magnet, drawing on people. And in the course of trying to do whatever we have done in the year of return, it is noted that, it should be noted that our president had an extensive um, tour of the Caribbean countries. And in every place that he went, we try to lay the foundation and cement the, you know, the relationship that we have among us, and then for providing the opportunity for them to also, you know, pay a visit and you know consolidate. And it's also relevant. I know Professor Kujuyanka has done some marvelous work earlier on with our, you know, the Asante Hineo Tufo Pukwai. and these are all, you know, things that we could revisit to see how our cultures really, really, you know. Um, uh, are so similar, are so, are so, are so this much, very much the same across, and therefore provides the 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 the, the fabrics that we need to you know, have in place to, to build as a as a people. Let me let me dive in and be the sandwich between you and Mr. Yanka because I know Mr. Yanka has some things to say, but I just want to 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 say if we we got we could probably use the concept of beyond the return. Uh, to really lay a solid foundation in terms of how we move forward. I know that tourism is absolutely important and to get people back uh, to visit the various tourist sites. But I hope that the, um, the Secretariat of the Beyond the Return will also think about uh, having a prescribed educational anchor uh, into the Beyond Return. And maybe there should be some segments that uh, some sectors that we look at uh, as a whole as we're talking about the beyond beyond the return, not only the, the tourist side of this, but the cultural side of it, the political side of it, the economic side of it, uh, and kind of begin to think about how do we begin to even bring people together to talk about uh, all of these sectors and what that might mean for uh, accenting uh, pan-Africanism, because I, I do believe that tourism is a way to get them there, but once they get there, they have to have a context for why they came from a historical standpoint and a contemporary standpoint, and how do we move forward uh, to the future? So I hand it off to my brother. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Silva. Yes, I, what I want to add on to what uh, Mr. Abibu said is this. We need to take a broader view broader, you know, though Ghana is taking the initiative, we need to take a broader view of, uh, of, of this whole thing. Uh, we are talking about 1.4 billion people on the continent, and we're talking about another close to um, 200 million outside of the continent, in South America, in Central America, in the Caribbean, in India. I just, uh, you know, stumbled upon information that there are 250,000 Blacks in Pakistan um, who, as a result of, you know, George Floyd and others are all, you know, going into the streets to ask for dignity and all that. It is happening in New Zealand. It is happening in Australia. 
It is happening in Colombo. It is, sorry, in Colombia. It is happening in Cuba and, and a whole lot of other places. So we should look broadly at how we're going to now link ourselves together. How do we talk? How do we start talking? And the question is, how do we do it? Uh, yeah, tourism is one aspect, It's but not everybody can travel. Yeah. yeah. So let's now look broadly at how do we link up with each other? And now you have um, digital space. So we need to, beyond government, I mean, this is a government initiative, which is fine. Uh, beyond government, let educational institutions. I've seen um, HBCUs coming to Ghana and to other parts of Africa, which is great. So let's have more HBCUs linking up with African universities. We have the Association of African Universities. Let them all link up. Let them link up with um, educational institutions in the Caribbean, under CARICOM, uh, in, in, in various parts of the world, and link up educationally, even uh, without Ghana's involvement or Ghana as, you know, as a facilitator. But let's get educationists talking. Our, our classrooms are empty of books about ourselves, the history, of the diaspora is not is not known much in this part of the continent. We have an Africa where Africans in West Africa do not know much about Africans in South Africa. We have Africa where people in South Africa do not know much about their their their, their kith and kin in in Central Africa or in North America. Sorry, North America or uh, sorry, North Africa. <laughs> So there's a lot of knowing about ourselves on the continent and then in the diaspora. Why can't we, now wait a minute. So our education institution should get together. We have an association of African universities. They should be able to link up with other associations in the Caribbean, in South, in South Asia, and uh, you know, in, in the in other parts of the of the world, let's link up. Secondly, we need to write more books. There are books that are telling about the history of Columbus. Now, it's it's significant to know that in the Caribbean, for example, they used to have a Columbus Day. And it is the Caribbeans themselves, led by the Historical Society of, um, of Trinidad, Tobago, and, uh, and Jamaica. They moved to get that holiday changed to Emancipation Day. These are concrete efforts. And not only that, the people in the Caribbean are very regular in Ghanaian Panafest. They, they are very eager to join up. The Prime Minister of uh, is it Barbados visited Ghana and um, confirmed that they would want to get uh, the linkage close to Ghana to learn more about Africa. Now, so that is the educational bit. We need to write books about each other. There are no books in our universities in Ghana written by African Americans. It's only a few universities. So we only know the history from the slave trade. As if our history started with the slave trade, which is again, you know, another wrong narrative. So we should go back to learn about ourselves. We know that the origin of man was in Africa. The origin of human civilization was Africa. The, that is where civilizations, we should get to know the dignity of the black person that was uh, trumped, you know, that uh, was um, worked over by other civilizations and get to know ourselves. Identity is important. So that is at the education level. Again, cultural level. These festivals like Pan-African Historical Theater Festival in Ghana 
Panafest is a good thing that needs all the support. It used to be under the umbrella of the African Union. So you got all the African states bringing delegations uh, from their various countries to join in. We should all have a meeting place where we can discuss our common interests. So there, that was cultural. So yes, although one can talk about tourism, but the immediate thing is culture, knowing our culture, joining ourselves together in arts and culture, dancing and singing, showing our art together, having um, a shop where we can sell products from various countries together, trading among ourselves. Can I stop we you are. right there? Okay, can I stop you right there? Mm -hmm. The problem with us in this country is we have no culture. We have no identity. The only identity we have is what the European gave us. Right. And you mentioned CARICOM. Are you familiar with the uh, event that occurred in La Ceiba, Honduras in 2002, where the term Afro-descendant was developed and it was accepted by the United Nations and that's the 250 million of people in the diaspora on the Western side? See, we are being killed. And that's what brought us together, the death of George Floyd. We don't need to study nothing. We need to be trying to get out of here. I hear you talking about tourism. Let's talk about a real plan of Exodus. Well, I think we okay, have to be before realistic. We answer that, we have to be Okay. Yeah, can I can I interrupt one second? We have a, yes, we do have a yes, caller yes. online. And I want to make sure we let some of the callers call in with their questions. Yep. Um, okay. So caller, if you're on the line, could you say your name, your first name, where you're calling from and ask your question very succinctly, please? And if it's to all the panelists, say to all the panelists or to one, let us, let us know. Caller? I want to make sure we let some of the callers if I put on mute, you won't be able to hear me. Yes. Put on mute. yes, you'll have to turn off your um, mute your thing so we can hear you. Please. Can you state your name and where you're calling from, caller? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. No, yes, ma'am. Yes, we can hear you call it. Go ahead and state your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Can you say your name? I think we have some technical difficulties on the on the side with the caller calling in. Okay, can I? While we're trying to get the call, I do want to respond to two things. Um, I, I do want to agree that we we need to have a a, a broad coalition as it relates to uh, addressing this issue. Uh, I I do believe that it can be rooted. And that's why I said earlier about the multi-sector approach to beyond the return. Education is one. As Ms. Yanka knows, during my time at Savannah State University, I brokered several agreements between Savannah State University and the University of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Science and Technology University, and Cape Coast University. And those things uh, were very beneficial. But in the, in the context of, of trying to pull us all back together, I do think that whatever we do and whatever you do in terms of beyond the return, it has to be grounded in a, in, a, in a cultural and educational understanding. Now, I know the Invisible Man was uh, talking about the, the mass exodus from the United States and other places going back to uh, the motherland. Uh, even if that was feasible, uh, we don't know if the infrastructure and everything else in the motherland could accommodate everybody. So I think that we have to not necessarily run from what America is doing to us, but we have to fight here. And that's why I say that when we begin to join forces together, uh, we can put pressure on, on America and anywhere else. Uh, we've seen how George 
Floyd situation has created a, a nationwide and international response. And my thinking is that we should not let the momentum of that response die down. This is a good time that we can begin to talk about how we come together with all these folks who have been impacted. And why not have a conversation through the African Union that would expand the beyond the return from Ghana to all of Africa and let it be a, a united initiative and have secretariats uh, mm -hmm. around the world, uh, wherever African people are, mm -hmm. and each of them coming together to foster some broader understanding about how we all come together with one cause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And we, they've gotten the caller back online, uh, and we have many callers. So just let me get some of these calls in. Okay. Um, can you let the first caller in? Please call her, state your name, where you're calling from, and your question, please. Uh, please, uh, the first caller, can you state your name? Deirdre Watson. Thank you so much. Okay, yes, see your name. Deirdre Watson. Okay, your question. Yes, your, your question, Deirdre. Your question. Thank you so much for calling in. And where are you calling from, Deirdre? Okay. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. okay, your question, please. What's your question? Oh, my question has to do with Marcus Garvey. Um, they mentioned him, but I just wanted to know, did he ever um, visit Ghana? Was he ever in Ghana? They mentioned W.E. Du Bois being in Ghana. They also mentioned um, George Padmore being in Ghana. But um, I, I don't know if... Um, if Marcus Garvey was ever in Ghana, I do see um, at the um, W.E.B. Du Bois Center, there is a, a guest house or some sort with his name on it, but I don't know if he was ever there. No, as far as I'm concerned, he never made it to Ghana. Yeah. Okay, so seven, seven calls. The, so go, first. No, I don't. Thank you. He, okay, he didn't, second caller. He did make it to Ghana, but as Mr. Yonke said, that his, his influence made it to Ghana. Uh, right. through, uh, his 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 speeches, his writings. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Nkrumah was was embracing some of the concepts from uh, from Garvey, but he never, to the best of my knowledge, uh, never was in Ghana. That's true. And, and and in Ghana right now, we have a, 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 a movement that is looking to see how they can put something down in his memory. So there's the Marcus Garvey Foundation in Ghana. That is working actively to make sure that they get something symbolic to represent his ideas, to represent his interests that he showed in the Pan Africanism. That's wonderful, wonderful. Um, call the next caller. Could you state your name, where you're calling from, your question? Why I have the opportunity? Your name and where are you calling? Why I have the opportunity? I want to link up with some of the issues that we've raised already. To, to also talk about um, how we can do things and right now? let things happen. Yeah. You're going to take another yes, call? Yes, I'm Yudita Yehuda. I'm calling from New York. Okay, baby, let, I'm sorry. I don't know, but let the call this question, then you can answer. Okay, yes, okay. call your name, please. Your name, please. We have a caller from New York on the line. Hello? Yes. New York? Yes, yes. Can caller, we can hear you. Yes. Can you say your name, please? Okay, just a minute. I just wanted to ask you something. I don't want to speak to the panelists. Um, there, was a, there was someone I heard calling in and interacting with the panelists, and I was just wondering what number he used to do that, because in addition to my question, I also wanted to make a comment to Mr. Babio, and I wanted to know, are we able to interact with the panelists as we speak like that other talk um, caller did? Yes, you, you. They can hear you. The panelists can hear you. Yes, thank you. But is it no. a yes or a no? Sorry, uh, can you repeat yourself? I didn't hear you that well. Hello. Yes, caller, can you repeat yourself? You. Yes, it was a question for you, you Honorable Vivio. Yeah. Can you repeat, please? Yes, I was just. Can 
Yes, I was wondering. I was wondering if I was able to interact with the panelists. There was a caller who called in and he was able to ask a direct question, and I was wondering if I was yes, able to do the same. Question. Yes. Oh, okay. I was. All the panelists can hear you. Okay. I, yes. I already asked the question. Okay. And what's the question? Okay. That's what I want to know. Okay, I just wanted to um, say to Mr. Ababio that um, I really appreciate. I was I was in Ghana last year for the year of return, and I really appreciate that there is um, a follow up initiative, um, which is called the Beyond the Return. And um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to. I, I do hope to go back to Ghana at some point. I'm not sure when I'll be able to. So is that um, year beyond the return? Is it just going to be for a year, two years? How long um, is this initiative going to no, be in place for? I, I already mentioned that the beyond the return is a 10-year program. Thank you. That is going to even leave a government, so that's the, the term of a government. So ideally, we are looking to have a longer period of um, bringing together all the things that we need to do to, to consolidate uh, the, the, the gains that we've made. Unfortunately, in this convey year, some of our initiatives have been stifled a bit, but uh, we are looking to organize ourselves and pick up from where, you know, taking advantage of the technology and the things that we can use to, to make some advances. Whilst I'm on this floor, I mean, please let me also uh, talk about some of the things that we are looking to see, we, to see how we can, we can make it possible. Because we mentioned that we need to have that link up with each other. We mentioned that we need to know ourselves. We need to, you know, be familiar with whoever is there, whoever is here, etc. What they do, what their culture is, and what you know their, their, their values are. And I think um, one means of doing this is to enable us is to how best we can enable the ease of you know movement among ourselves. It's a shame that you know as we speak, it's very difficult for one African to move from one African domain to the other. That whereas if you if you are a bearer of say the Western uh, uh, nationality or passport uh, holder, you have a better freedom of moving across even in Africa and I guess in the Caribbean and other places. So these are some of the things that we need to address. It's interesting to note that when Ghana, you know, was going through the period of the year of return, we then realized that we, we for somebody traveling from say Jamaica to Ghana. He had no opportunity of coming straight to Ghana unless perhaps he had to go through Europe. This is something that we need to address. The ease of transportation and the ease of movement among ourselves. The first thing that would help us to really, really know ourselves is if we can really go to each other and you know, get to know each other so well. And I suppose in the, it's important that we have a look at the, the visa regimes that we have across you know, um, the African countries and the Caribbean countries vis-a-vis -vis, uh, um, Ghana and the, all the Pan-African countries, et cetera, to see how we can make it easier for us to you know, really move across the continent, across the world, to wherever the Black people are. Of course, we can use technology as much as possible to really get to know ourselves. But there's nothing as you know as as important as get, really getting to feel, to eat and touch the people, to really you know, as we say in Ghana, eat Ghana, um, wear Ghana, drink Ghana, and everything about Ghana. You know, that's what I suppose we need to do. So. We, we really need to work on that aspect of, you know, the freedom of movement of the, the African community among the African uh, people. I think in, in terms of, of even starting with the culture, uh, I've been going back and forth to different parts of Africa over the last 30 years, uh, West Africa, East Africa, North Africa, South Africa. And one of the things that I see in West Africa and, and in Ghana in particular, uh, sometimes when I'm traveling there, I, I see the impact of the Western influence and the Western media in particular, and with the younger Africans and the younger, younger Canadians in particular. Uh, and it seems as if what they are doing is trying to emulate uh, the West and sometimes the worst of the West. 
So we have to make sure that they understand um, the importance and the rich culture uh, that exists there and to embrace that. And then we have to do the same thing on this side of the Atlantic, help our people understand and embrace uh, the rich culture that exists there and can embrace that. One of the things that I hope that you all would think about, um, Mr. B Abibio, uh, with regards to the uh, beyond the return, is putting together maybe a universal curriculum uh, of what might one expect uh, in terms of this 10 year project. Um, looking at it, as I said earlier, not from only from an educational standpoint, but from a cultural standpoint, uh, an economic standpoint, uh, and a political standpoint. And maybe the beyond the return can begin to uh, have conferences around each one of those sectors that bring together uh, African nations, as well as folk who are in the diaspora. Dr. Butler was talking about an action plan. To me, that is a concrete action plan where we will farm out a particular Dr. Silver. sector and move from there. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Silver, I don't mean to interrupt you, but there's a caller on the line who keeps dropping and she really wants to say something. Okay. Um, so, uh, producer, can we get the caller on the line? Let them get in now. Uh, they were, I was getting a lot of texts like they were angry because we're not letting them talk. So, sorry, caller. Um, we're going to try to take as many as we can. We might get to everybody. We talk, the technology was not allowing us to hear them. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, caller, are you there? Caller, are you there? Um, Yes. Your name, please. Yadida, okay, Yadida please say your name. From New York. Thank New you York very right much, now. Paula. Okay. Yes, can you please state your question? And thank you so much. And where are you calling from? Hello, say you ask your question. Did it drop again? Hello, ask your question. Ask my question right now? Yes. Yes, yes, please. Oh, okay, so... um. My question is, um, when is there going to be a real dialogue between the, the African countries, Ghana in particular, and some of the Caribbean countries that have maybe done some things that Ghana is hoping to do, um, both in tourism and in other areas? Because we don't have to reinvent the wheel. I think part of Marcus Garvey's dream was for us to learn from each other and um, for us to have dialogue directly with each other. So. Okay, so caller is asking. Can we just call her? Let me okay, start with something first before um, perhaps Prof comes in. I think it's fair to say that uh, as far as the AU is concerned, there's this initiative about the recognition of the, uh, the fifth region, which is basically the wider African, yeah, is it a six, six region, sorry, so the six region. So it is in that context that, you know, a bigger conversation can, can, can be had to, to really, you know, and see how best that can be, you know, realized. Thank you. Yes, and if Thank I should just much. link up, sorry, be that, if quickly, is somebody no, on the line? Um, there was, there is another caller. Let's do one more call. This is the last call. So, caller, can we get your name and where you're calling from, please? Your name and where are you calling from? Yes, my name is Deirdre Watson. I um, I called before. I just wanted to follow up on Doctor um, Mr. Babio's uh, response to my question earlier about um, beyond the return. Beyond the return. Okay, what did you want to follow up? About which question? Yeah, um, I called in before, and I wanted to um, ask a follow-up question to the, to Mr. Ababio about the year of return. The, I'm a, beyond the return. Yes. Okay, your question, please. Your question, please. Yes. Sorry, what do you want me to yes, say about okay, the return? 
Um, there's such a disconnect with this thing. Um, yes, um, I, 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 I just following up on what Mr. Ababio says about the Beyond the Return, um, the initiative, they all sound um, very good. And I'm really pleased to hear that Ghana has something in place. And I just have um, a question about well, the year. The, the year of return last year seemed to be seemed to have focused primarily on the U.S. and U.K. and maybe to some extent the Caribbean countries. Um, I know that the the um, the, the um, Prime Minister of Barbados um, visited. And there were some representatives from Jamaica, different functions. Um, but what about um, the diaspora and African diaspora in Latin America? Um, would you consider extending the, um, what do you call it, beyond the return to include um, all diaspora and not just focus on a certain um, uh, um, sector? Because we do have Africans that were taken to Latin American countries like Venezuela, Colombia, Peru. Um, um, that uh, that is, you know, something that you, uh, you probably need to um, to look into to extend it to all diaspora and not just focus on a certain a certain sector. I think certainly yes, we 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 are very keen that it should embrace all and not just be limited to the African Americans and the Caribbeans. I mean, our ambassador in the Brazil for one, Professor Abner Buzia, is very keen. And is working very hard to see how we can we can extend our activities all over and embrace all those that are living in those countries. So yes, we we recognize the shortfall as far as those coverages are concerned, and uh, we we are determined to work on that to embrace all in everything that we do. So yeah, we 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 quite conscious of that, and uh, we want to address that. Yeah, and I just want to say we have callers actually on the line and they're in the text box. They're from um, Toronto, Jamaica, the Virgin Islands. So a lot of people are on this call today. Uh, so we, we want to thank all of our callers in. We want to give our questions. We're going to let our panelists finish up. And if there's any other comments or concerns, um, I will put my email. If we put my email on the web, on the, put my email on so that I could, so we can answer the some other questions afterwards. So you had some, some, some things you were saying, Dr. Silver, can you continue on? Yeah, I was just simply saying, I was agreeing with the caller actually, uh, and to with Dr. Bibio saying that maybe as we're structuring this beyond re return that we can have secretariats in various places in the diaspora where uh, people of African descent are and have a fundamental curriculum in terms of what they might be discussing uh, with some real action plans around the concept of culture, economics, uh, politics, religion, and, and the works. That's kind of what I was saying. Yeah. And if I should add to that, um, I would also like to see another umbrella role uh, taken by the African Union, as uh, my brother Bebio mentioned. See, African Union has recognized the diaspora as the sixth region, as he said. So we should see more efforts at the top there, the cultural, educational, using the kind of uh, political clout that they have to also bring some support to all these initiatives that African countries are taking. I'm Ghanaian, but I believe that if any other country is starting something uh, that is worthy of supporting, why not? But the point I'm making is that if Ghana has a year of return, definitely the African Union cultural wing should give support to it and spread out to invite all the other agencies in various parts of, of, of the world to be part of it. That's why the diaspora has an embassy in Washington. And I'm told the diaspora also has another embassy in China or in Asia somewhere. So we should um, communicate with each other and integrate all our efforts 
into strengthening the empowerment of the black person. At the end of the day, we want a strong Africa, economically well-to-do, a strong diaspora, economically strong. We would we want to see the you know the African, the black, wherever he or she is, to hold his or her head up high and dignity up there, to have that confidence that we are forced to reckon with. That should be the objective of Pan-Africanism. It's not a narrow concept. Um, the fact that Ghana has taken the lead doesn't mean Ghana has to monopolize everything. No, I know that in, in the Gambia, there was a festival that was started some years back called The Roots. It was all part of the effort to invite um, people of African descent to also um, know their roots. I know that uh, an attempt has been made in Nigeria before, Festac. Uh, I know that an attempt has been made in Dakar Festival. So, uh, sorry, Dakar, uh, you know, in Senegal. So I'm saying that we should think broadly. Mm -hmm. Even while we are looking at just Ghana, we should think broadly about the Pan-African world. We are talking about Pan-Africanism now. Yeah. And therefore, we must make all the efforts to know more about each other. Let's educate each other. Let's culturally get together. Let's uh, use the technology that is available now to link up with each other. If we cannot travel, we can't all travel. Let's yeah. make the conscious efforts to learn. What are the tools? What are the subjects? What are the themes up there in the digital space that we can all have access to, to know more about each other? People should take initiatives. Uh, and it's, again, not just governments. Um, I started by talking about universities. If uh, Association of African Universities and um, HBCUs and other universities in the diaspora can link up together and we have regular interaction, have the association meetings, discuss subject matters, discuss their history. I'm even more concerned about history. We do not know more about each other. And there is no reason, for example, why we should have black on black uh, killing in South Africa or in other parts of the continent. These are all artificial creations that we should understand. And it's through education. So we should be able to have books of uh, African-Americans easily in African schools. We should be able to have African writers books all over. We should have books in, uh, in, in Brazil, from Brazil translated into English to other parts of that. Those are concrete things. So educationally, culturally, politically, African Union can take that one up. Yeah. Us, they have now, what I was going to say, um, uh, I, we're going to we have to take one more call and just one more call. But one thing I want to say was that um, we can do virtual field trips and we can do that through Zoom. And actually, my organization is starting to do that. Just we're getting ready to do virtual field trips starting next week, where we're taking young people as, as young as middle school on virtual field trips and we will be doing a field trip to the continent um if we have the call we'll just take one more call then we're going to wrap up um caller you're on the line please introduce yourself and where are you coming from um my name is kemi seriki i'm from new york i'm calling from new york this is the second time i'm listening to this show and thank you for taking my call and um, one thing I've been enjoying with this program is about, you know, how we could come together. And I know you've been addressing people going back to Ghana, to different parts of Africa. But these are specific set of people who are middle class that they could be able to afford this, to travel back to Africa. I'm actually from Nigeria. But when we look at immigrant population in America, most of us, we live around, among other people of African descent. All black people live together within the same community. But how can we organize community forum to bring African-American people from the Caribbean and have those start discussion? 
Because those are the people who can afford, you know, most of the people can afford to go to Ghana or to go to Nigeria or any other part of Africa. So we have to start having a, a together community forum. Our children are going to the same public school system. How can we institute learning and pull them together and be, build up the grassroots from there? And also, I want to talk about, you know, many of our students in university campus. You have many African uh, uh, associations. They call themselves uh, African uh, Student Association. Then you have Black Student Association. Not two of those parts are not coming together. You have the Caribbean Student Association. They are not all pulling together to have a common discussion. And we have so many African American and Africans as part of the academia in those schools. They are part of the professors. How can we pull the people who are actually specialized in black studies, as well as the African immigrants who are professors who specialize in African studies together? So to me, we have to start from the grassroots of you know the commonality of the population. Because when we talk about people going back to Ghana, it's just talking about upper middle class of the people who can afford to buy tickets. Parents might be able to buy tickets. What about the children? What about the African young ones, you know, who are growing up, who were born in this country or growing up in this country, and also African Americans? So that's just uh, part of my take into this discussion. Thank you. I think you hit the nail right on the head with this um, you know, observation, and I think um, it's something that we really need to address. Um, the positive thing that for some of us we see with this COVID thing is how technology is suddenly being, you know, is used to, is helping us to get our acts going. And I guess, you know, going forward, this is something we have to embrace to see how we can utilize the, the technology, the, 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 you know, to, to reach out as many people as possible and to facilitate the education that has been pointed out over here that needs to take place. So we, we have a lot to do. The challenge is there. We have to accept it, and we have to, you know, use all the means possible to do this. Of course, if it's limited to travel and tourism, then seriously, as she rightly points out, only a few people are in a position to really, really enjoy that, and we need to. I want to take this opportunity, once I have it, to also talk about, you know, something that Prof mentioned: some of the artificial device that we need to address. The artificial divide that has been imposed upon us by, you know, the French speaking, the English speaking, and the Spanish speaking, etc. We need to really, really, you know, again cross that divide and uh, reach out to all the people as far as we can. And that's uh, something that I hope we will find a means to do very well. Thank you. This is. I want to agree with the caller. Uh, I think that he made a very valid point. And that's kind of what I was trying to get at when I was saying that as we're dealing with this um, beyond the return, if we could have secretariats in various places where African people and African descendants are, if we have a unified curriculum in terms of what should be discussed when those people come together at the grassroots level to have a common understanding of what that culture is or what that history is or what have you. But I still believe that as Mr. Yanka suggested earlier that the African Union should have and could have a very big part in pulling all this together. But as even if you're talking about beyond the return in Ghana, reach out to the various places where uh, folk are and begin to have some platform that they can follow that is consistent across across borders. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, callers, my email has my, can you put my email back up? Please, any other questions, concerns, could you please email them to me? And I will get them to all the panelists as well. And we will be in communication because this is just the start of a dialogue. This is not the end because we do have to come together. Honorable Vivio, you were gonna say something? Yes, I was going to say that, um, in addition to recognition of what has already been said regarding the EU and what they need to put in, I'm excited that you know across Africa there is this dawn of uh, uh, realization that uh, we need to beef up our you know mobilization of the diaspora. So in Nigeria, for instance, they have the Diaspora Commission. 
In Ghana, we have our diaspora affairs office, and, and in other African countries, they are all setting up these diaspora units that you know whip up the enthusiasm. And we already have our you know uh, the, the forum uh, contact among ourselves, which is developing nicely. But that is only just um, I think a, a small part of what we need to do. So there's the, the, it's still very relevant that the AU provides you know the, the the platform to enable us to really have that you know. Uh, education and the, the, the opportunity to have that forum, the conferences, et cetera, and to really support the, 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 you know, the, the states in all the initiatives that we, we will be embarking on. Thank you. Did any of my other guests, Dr. Silver, did you have any more last words? Dr. Young, Kojo Young, Honorable Kojo Young, have any last words? Because this has okay. been a lively discussion. I'm really, really excited that this is beginning of a dialogue here that can move beyond this. Well, my final words are that I'm, I'm again delighted that this conversation is taking place. I do want to stay in contact with uh, Professor Bibio to see what we can do in terms of increasing this dialogue. I'm in constant contact with Mr. Yanka uh, already. So I'm just looking forward to the, the discussions and the great action plans that can come out of these uh, discussions. So thank you again for having me as a part of this distinguished panel. It's my pleasure. Okay. Yeah, let me, that would be where you're going. No, no, you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me say that it's important that these discussions continue. Um, the next time I would, of course, hear the subject matter was Ghana, uh, which is a good idea. But when you talk about Pan-Africanism, uh, let's let's go broader. I mean, it's a great advantage. Ghana is the beacon of African liberation. And when one talks about Pan-Africanism, one talks about Kwame Nkrumah, one talks about Ghana and all that. But the, the question that was, um, as the last, the last question about divisions out there in 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 the diaspora, it's it's uh, it's an important one. Uh, you have situations where people of African descent, but from different generations, are not supporting each other because they do not understand each other, and. Uh, you know, Nigerians are doing this, they have a small association, Ghanaians are doing this. That's all nice. But again, you sometimes we even find that African Americans are not reaching out very well to the Africans and Africans from the continent who have just come to America are not also reaching out to the African Americans. All those are part of the struggles that we must take into, you know, uh, cognition in getting our the whole Pan-Africanist thing together, because it's a question of understanding that we have the same heritage and we have the same destiny. If we recognize that our, our heritage is the same, we came from the same backyard, we suffered the same, whether you went through the transatlantic slave trade or you remained on the continent, you suffered, you suffered, you know, um, denigration of, 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 your, of your personality and that we have to struggle together and regain the confidence that we need and that we had before to now face the world, we will, it will be a better thing for all of us. So, Yes, Ghana has taken the lead. There's no doubt about it. There's a reason for it. But all other countries, all other parts of the world where Blacks live should all realize that we have the same heritage and therefore we have the same destiny and that we should not be fighting amongst ourselves, but we should work together. That's all I can say, Yvette. Thank you. And Honorable Bibio, did you say any last words? Do you have any last words before I close it off? Um, yes, if I have to say something, it would only be about um, 
the, you know, emphasizing what has already been said and that we need to work together. We need to pool resources. Uh, we need to build capacity and, um, you know, help each other. For whatever we have done in Ghana, we are ready to share our experience with others. And uh, I'm glad that, you know, others are also taking some initiatives. But the, the, as we have only we've pointed out here, the, the, the bigger players should be drawn into this game to really take up their, you know, the basic role that they have to provide, the platform that they have to provide all of us to enable this uh, to effectively happen. Thank you. Well, I want, I want to thank all my esteemed guests. And like I said, this is only the beginning of all. And like on American, on behalf of American Africans United, which is why we're having these, these, these discussions and talks, because just a little bit, American Africans United, we're, we're a nonprofit, we're a national nonprofit organization. And literally our goal is to unite the African communities around the United States and Canada and West Indies and other African descents on a shared goal. We want to achieve economic empowerment. We want to achieve political representation. We want to pursue housing and health care, education, citizenship. And today was truly something that is our model stands for, our mission talks about. And we are one. We are only stronger together. Um, please, callers, if you're out there, if you have any questions, comments, my email is on the screen. You can email me anything. I will get it to the panelists. Even if you see some of our previous discussions, if you want to email me about those, I will definitely get in some information answers back out to you. But if you want to be part of this movement, if you want to be part of unifying us as one, please email me so we can start the dialogue. I will try to help and we're looking at action steps and we really didn't get get a chance to go and dive into all that. And so I'm gonna ask my panelists, please send in some action steps so we can share it. Uh, we'd like to share it onto our website because we have to move forward as one. And Pan-Africanism will make us all stronger we see from all the historical perspectives and anything that happens historically, we have been, when we are one, we can achieve. When we're divided, when we're divided, we're actually, unfortunately, we fail. Um, so please email me and you can go to our website at aau1on.org. That's aau one and Dot org. So please email me any comments, concerns, questions. Panelists, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope to have you on again. And I, I well, I'm going to ask you to come on again because we didn't really get to talk about everything we wanted to talk about. And right now, we have to seize the opportunity because I want to get into how we need to be economically empowered to do so because they were saying a lot of people can't afford to go. But guess what? We have to pull our resource to go and take a few more people. Now, I've been able to take over 120 youth to the continent, and we got to continually do that and start exposing our black brothers and sisters here in the diaspora to the continent because everyone can't afford it. But if we pull our resource together, we can get us we can get enough of us there so they can bring that knowledge back home here. And wherever they live in the diaspora, so we can educate ourselves to be one. So on that, I want to again thank my panelists. I want to thank Africa today for allowing us to go a little over today. This is usually an hour; they let us go a little bit over an hour and a half. I want to thank Africa today for hosting us, and again thank all of our guests. And I'm sorry we couldn't get to all the questions. There were many, many questions that we couldn't get to, but um, please email me. And I would definitely, we will respond. If you have a question to the panelists, just send it and we will get you an answer. So thank you again. And we look forward to seeing you next Friday at 7 o'clock. And if you celebrate 4th of July, I'm not sure what Independence Day it is, but have a happy and safe one. Thank you so much. Thank you.
your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Africa Today. Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Africa Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africtoday.com. Africa Today, the best of digital TV. ESYDA returned to play summer clinics. Recreation, Tuesday and Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. Travel team, EDP, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Free mask and water bottle. Register today at esyda.org. Email info at esyda. Phone 248-765-9369. Office 301-800-7848. Toll free 800-995-5532. Free registration for all summer clinics. All new players need buy uniforms. We're following COVID-19 soccer guidelines. Small group practice with nine players and one coach. For more information, go to esyda.org. L'entrepreneuriat digital vous intéresse-t-il Vous voulez apprendre à construire des projets digitaux Aimeriez-vous gagner des revenus passifs conséquents en tout lieu Voici la plateforme des professionnels du digital, la Diaspo Academy. Ici, vous retrouverez les meilleurs professionnels de la diasporama mondiale connectés sur notre plateforme. Vous allez pouvoir acquérir des formations adéquates qui feront de vous des entrepreneurs digitaux compétents. Étudiants, entrepreneurs, coachs, instructeurs et entreprises, Diaspo Academy est une opportunité pour vous. Elle vous offre la possibilité de suivre votre formation en mode virtuel à partir de chez vous, où que vous soyez sur la planète. Toutes nos formations disponibles en ligne sont dispensées de manière interactive. Il suffit de vous inscrire et vous pourrez les suivre depuis chez vous. Au cours de la formation, vous passerez des quiz et examens selon votre parcours. En outre, à partir de votre tableau de bord, vous suivrez vos performances et progressions. Vous pourrez aussi communiquer avec vos instructeurs et recevoir des notifications. À la fin de votre parcours de formation, vous recevrez un certificat Diaspo Academy Certified. Que vous soyez débutant ou responsable d'entreprise, Diaspo Academy est une opportunité pour vous. Saisissez-la Enfin, que vous soyez coach ou instructeur, ayez accès à un millier d'étudiants à travers notre plateforme. Merci de choisir Diaspo Academy, le meilleur choix. Pour plus d'informations, allez sur www.diaspoacademy.com. Diaspo Academy la plateforme des professionnels du digital. Looking to start a rewarding career? Call Gandhi Healthcare today to earn your certification as a nursing assistant, dental assistant, pharmacy technician, phlebotomy technician, and many more. We offer no interest payment plans, scholarships, and tuition reimbursements for those that qualify. Located right in the heart of Pikesville on Town Road and McHenry Avenue in the Pikesville Shopping Center. It offers immediate access from 695 accessible to public transportation on the 83 and 89 bus line. We offer morning, evening, and weekend classes to fit your schedule. Earn your certification in as little as five weeks. We are now offering classes online and on-site. Hurry, classes start soon, so enroll today. Visit us online at GandhiHealthcare.com or call 443-352-8030. Do you want to promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Africa Today. Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Africa Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africtoday.com.